I'm Vessi. I come from Finland. I consider myself a, as a preventive health expert. Plus, I'm also the CEO and product developer of Sally Systems. So, uh, my my main uh, business is uh, developing seating uh, ergonomic environments for different professions and so on. Um, and uh, I've been on this job which started accidentally about 27 years, and uh, I have lots and lots of ideas for different environments for the future, driving, paddling, sleeping, and so on. I'm not at my best now. I have slept badly, because I was stupid enough to forget my pillow at home. I have developed a new pillow, which I'm going to patent next week. <laughs> <laughs> I had to sleep on horrid uh, hotel pillow, which spoiled my night. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I have a colleague. Yes, my name is Emilia, and when I'm not in Stockholm wearing muscle suits, I'm based in Norway studying medicine. And I met Vesi in Finland uh, at the last biohacker summit. And uh, I was surprised when he approached me and asked me some anatomy and physiology questions and I couldn't answer. And uh, he also asked me uh, about my habits of sitting in clothing and I was surprised about my ignorance about the subject in a way. So I was very eager when you challenged me to, to um, change some of my habits and uh, I will tell you a little bit about my experience with changing clothes and changing my sitting habits uh, later. Right, now we have here uh, genital vessels, which are outside the body. So there are the vessels which are in the penis and there are vessels which are in the, in the testicles. And now you don't need very much imagination so that we think that this is this bone structure which is holding up the upper body when you're sitting down and you are putting your 34 50 80 kilo upper body weight on these bones and these vessels get squeezed between the bones and the chair you know nothing happens in those vessels so those uh, genitals are actually starving that time what is the solution there is a solution so when we look at this uh, picture on this, on the, from the back, we can see that the genital vessels are on a rather narrow area, so that if we are sitting on a gap and we have truly loose trousers, then, then, uh, then we get some hope for the circulation to con continue. One more thing that I want to make men very much aware of are the testicles. So brilliant. I was stunned to, to get to know a little bit about the physiology of the, of the testicles. So in the middle, you can see these red areas. They are where the testosterone is being produced. Actually, 75% of the testosterone, 25% comes from someplace else. And then we have these Leydig cells, uh, these other areas between the Leydig cells where the testosterone is made there, where the sperm is made. Actually, the root of the sperm is quite long. So it's, it's taking four months before it's ready to come out and... and, and um, into, into ejaculation. Uh, the testicle is a very, very particular organ. So nature has not been able to solve the problem of, of doing all these tremendously complicated um, biochemistry inside the body in 30, 37 degrees. Hasn't made it. And that's why it had to make, put it outside the body and, and, and determine that the 33 degrees Celsius is the optimum temperature for making the, the sperm and, and producing the testosterone. And uh, testicles have actually four separate mechanisms how it regulates its temperature, that it's trying, uh, desperately trying to keep it in, in 33. But if um, we have a modern man with these tight trousers, which will squeeze the genitals against the body, sitting on a padded chair and having uh, underwear and all that, we eliminate easily all those mechanisms for the, for the poor testicles to try to maintain the 33 centigrade and also avoiding the pressure. No hope there. And, and that's why we really need to pay attention on the clothing and on the sitting, because we do that so much. As you know, many people are sitting 12 to 16 hours a day. We just walk to the next seat to go. Here we have a more detailed picture about uh, pelvic. And uh, there we also see this, what we call the pelvic bowl. So where, where we have the sacrum over there and, and going to the pubic bone over here, here we have so-called 
pelvic bowl, and it's, it's only, in men, it's less than one liter. And that one liter contains 47% all cancer cases in men. Almost every other cancer in men is in a tiny little space in the pelvic, where the sitting pressure comes in. And uh, when those, those boys who are, not, who are ignorant, or even if they know something, they're bad boys, they come into a situation like this. So, so the doctor is suspect, suspecting that they have a prostate cancer. And, and so he's putting his tiny little finger through the anus and touching that if the prostate is healthy or not, overgrown or whatever. Nowadays, it can also be tested with ultrasound so that you get, get the, the measurement what it should be. Uh, the health prostate size is 10 to 11 grams, and 60-year-old guys already have three to five times bigger prostate as a rule nowadays in our modern society. So it starts getting irritated, and, and, and the prostate does get ill, at least so that it, it need, wants to ur urinate, uh, causes the, the, when it grows, it uh, makes the bladder smaller, so the man needs to go and go to the toilet several times a night when they, when they age. Every sixth man gets the prostate cancer. Every sixth of those who do get prostate cancer die of it. But even if you wouldn't die of it, it's a hell of a disease to have. All the time, the fear and anxiety, what's going to happen with me, with my prostate cancer? <laughs> 